Well, the Euros, uh, the football tournament, is coming up. And perhaps you'll be cheering on Wales. Uh, perhaps not. Uh, but nationality is sometimes a way in which we think about ourselves. Uh, we think of ourselves as Welsh. Uh, or you might think of yourself as English. Uh, but someone might say that they find their identity in their nationality. Uh, these days, people find their identities in all kinds of things, uh, in their race, or their sexuality, or their gender. Uh, but in our verses today, there's something far more important than any of those things. Uh, what matters, what really matters, is belonging to Jesus Christ. I want us today to begin to look at verses 10 to 13. Uh, we will return to them, but I just want us to focus on this. Uh, the ways in which these verses describe our union with Christ. Uh, so remember the context of this epistle. The writer is saying uh, to these Jewish Christians, he's saying to them, don't ditch Christ. Uh, and here he's showing them that the Christian is someone who belongs to Christ. So verse 10 speaks of God bringing many sons to glory. Uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, he is the one eternally begotten by the Father. But Christians become sons by adoption. Uh, in that sense, Christ is their brother. Uh, verse 11 says, For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all, <coughs> all have one source. Uh, where verse 11 says, all have one source, uh, the ESV has a footnote uh, which says that the Greek is all are of one. Uh, it's the sense of belonging to the same family. Christians are united in Christ. Uh, they are now uh, together in that they belong to him. They are part of his family. Uh, that's clearly the sense of what's going on here because verse 11 goes on and says, that is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Uh, verse 12 goes on, and uh, these words are considered as the words of Christ. Verse 12 says, I will tell of your name to my brothers. Uh, so Christ considers believers as his brothers. And then verse 13. Uh, so again, these words are considered to be the words of Christ. Behold, I am and the children God has given me. Uh, so there, Christ considers believers to be his children. Uh, all of these descriptions tell us uh, that to be a Christian is to belong to Christ. Uh, to be a Christian is to be an adopted son of God, where Christ is our brother. Uh, it's to belong to the same family as Christ. It's to be a child of Christ. We all have one source. We all belong to his family. And now what does that mean for us, uh, to belong to Christ's family? Well, firstly, be encouraged today in this way. Look at verse 10 again. Because of Christ's work, God is bringing many sons to glory. Uh, John Hughes's funeral a few weeks ago, I recalled a story John had told me once. Um, he had been away in Germany doing national service, uh, but at last he was released from that and so he headed home to Merthyr. Uh, he, he described how he got to Calais and then the crossing uh, and then he had to look for somewhere to stay the night in Dover and then the next morning um, he began the long journey across country towards South Wales and then when he finally arrived at the family home in Kevin, what did he find? Uh, he found the family had moved uh, and no one had forwarded any address to John to tell him where they'd moved to. And so he had to knock on the neighbour's door to ask them where his family had gone. Uh, but this is the point. When he arrived at the new house, he was able to go in. He was able to go in and rest after his long journey. Why could he do that? He could do that because he was a son of the family. It was his right. He was part of the family. 
Well, so it is true that the Christian is heading to glory because the Christian has been adopted into God's family. Uh, the God of glory is bringing his children into his glory because, because we are his sons. Uh, we will not be refused entry. Uh, it is now, if you like, our birthright. Uh, in John's Gospel, in John chapter 1, John writes this, John 1 verses 12 and 13. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Uh, remember to Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans 8 verse 16 says, uh, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And then verse 17 goes on, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. It's interesting there in verse 17 uh, that it says we are children, heirs, fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him. Uh, remember that these Christians, um, these Christians that the epistle of Hebrews was written to, they were considering ditching Christ because of opposition, because of suffering. If you ditch Christ because of suffering, then the status of being a child of God is lost to you. But if you keep hold of Christ, uh, this status cannot be taken away from you and you will be glorified. Uh, you will enter into glory and you will be made like Christ. What else does it mean uh, for us to belong to God's family or, or to be related in this way to Christ? It also means this. It means that God will sanctify us. Uh, look at verse 11 again. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. To be sanctified is to be made holy. Uh, what's in mind here is what theologians sometimes call a progressive sanctification. Uh, what's a progressive sanctification? It's God's work in our lives by which we become progressively more and more holy. Uh, progressively we become more and more free from sin. Uh, we become more and more like Christ. Now that's what's going on in these verses. Um, if we are in the family, then we will progressively come to bear more and more the family resemblance. Uh, have you had that experience of going back through family photo albums? Uh, there's some photo of a family member who is now quite old perhaps, but there's this picture. And in the picture, they're young. And you're amazed at how much they look like someone in the family who is now at that age. Children look like people in their families. If we are really Christians, we will become more and more like Christ. Perhaps there are some things about us that we've inherited from our families that we don't like. Uh, something about our physical appearance. Uh, that at times we've, we've wished was different. But it's a family trait. We can't change it. We've inherited the genes. We look this way because we've inherited our looks from our parents. Or maybe there's something about our temperament. Uh, we seem to have um, dispositions to certain behaviours. Uh, and they are dispositions that were, were true for one of our parents too. Uh, there are things about our personalities that are family traits. Uh, things about us that perhaps we wish were different, but we can't change them because we've inherited them. Now the point is this, if you are despondent today, uh, you feel that you've made little progress in the Christian life. On the one hand, do what this writer to the Hebrews is encouraging his readers to do. Keep 
clinging to Christ. It is by Christ, only by Christ, that you are in the family. But then, be encouraged and take heart. Uh, there is a kind of inevitability to holiness. We must strive for holiness. Don't misunderstand me. Um, but also, if you are a Christian, holiness must be. It must be that you will become like Christ because you are in the family. Uh, just like you can't help uh, some of the family traits you've inherited, so too, if you are a real Christian, um, if you are trusting in Christ alone for salvation, you can't prevent being made like Christ. The family resemblance will and must be seen in you because you are in him. It is inevitable in that sense. And it is, of course, uh, the very reason God saved you, to make you holy. Uh, he will have a people for himself and they will be a holy people. Uh, his purpose is to bring many sons to glory.